Oof, it has been a long time since I have made a wrap up video to talk about the books that I've read recently, but here we are. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So if you follow my channel, then you probably know that for a large period of the year, I am just reading and talking about the books that are nominated for Booker. I read all the books and I make a video for each of the books. That means that during that time, I am pretty much only reading those books and I'm only for sure making videos about those books. But every once in a while, there are some books that slide in uh, while I'm reading those that I do want to talk about, but I can't really make a wrap up at the end of like a month because there would be like, oh, here's the two books I read besides the ones that I have full length videos about. So yay. So I figured that today I could do like a fall wrap up that kind of covers all of the books that I've read during Booker season and then also uh, into November because I was done reading those in November, um, but I read some more books and I want to talk about them. So I've got like quite a stack going on here. Let's see if I can lift this up. Oh my gosh. And I don't really know the order in which I read these. I like dropped off of using both Goodreads and Storygraph, but I'm just gonna kind of go through them. So first I'll uh, talk about the books that I don't have a physical copy of, just that I don't forget. So the first one was a collection of short stories that's called Kind But Kind of Weird by Joey Held, who was actually on the Best Fictional Friends podcast that I am a part of. Uh, so our best deadbeat friend he was on that episode. I can't remember what episode number it is, but if you want to check that out, please do consider it. So this collection of short stories, it's like a fun, cute, sweet uh, group of short stories. Um, some of my favorites that I marked down that I wanted to share was um, The Last Donut. <laughs> uh, oh, This Is Art was good. Um, Walk of Fame and One More Hit. Those are like right back to back. I really liked. Um, the particularly Walk of Fame. I think that that one was probably my favorite, which is basically about a guy that um, dresses up as Where's Waldo on the Walk of Fame. And then like he gets money for people taking pictures with him and stuff. And like he has conversations with like other people that are along it that dress up as different things. And there's this guy that dresses up as Groot and like fully gets into it and has to, you know, really go over the top with like makeup and everything. But I, I think that that one would probably be my favorite of the short stories. If you want to read those short stories, I know that they're for sure available on Amazon. Um, there might be some other places, but I'll have all the info uh, in the description. Next up, um, let's talk about uh, Missing, which is the fourth book of the Fear Street series by R.L. Stein. So I had a book that was the first four stories. It looked like this and <laughs> I had like a physical copy of it. Um, but I've already put it in one of those like little libraries because I figured um, other people would enjoy it, especially around Halloween time. But I really liked R.L. Stein growing up. I was too scared to read Fear Street when I was into his books. And so I think I've read like a couple of them here and there, but I was always like, Ooh, that was a bad idea. Uh, but I never really read them in order or anything. So I thought it'd be fun to read the first four. I knew that there was a series coming to Netflix when I purchased the book a year ago. Um, but I didn't realize that it wasn't going to be like based off of them really at all. I mean, maybe it is based off of some of the stories and they're just not the ones I've read, but it's certainly not based off of the first one in the series. So anyways, I read Missing, which is the fourth book, as I said, which was about these two kids whose parents go missing. And I do think R.L. Stein did get better as he wrote for Fear Street. Like the first one was just not good. It was called like The New Girl. Not good. <laughs> Um, and then I think the second one was like a touch better, but pretty boring. And then the third one it really got really got going on that one. And then of course the fourth one missing, which I would say is like read it about the same as I felt about the third. So it was kind of nice that the progression went upwards because after reading the first, I was like, oh, maybe this was a bad idea, like to read the first four books um, and like buy them all at once in this collection. But I ended up, you know, having more fun with it. I probably won't continue if I'm honest. Okay, I think that that's all the ones that I've read recently that I don't have a physical copy of. Oh, no, I'm lying. Also, One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read that one, which is about a woman who is married, I was gonna say engaged, but she's married to a man that um, ends up going missing and then is uh, soon pronounced dead. And then after a couple years or something, she ends up 
um, getting engaged to another man and then like her first husband shows back up and like, oh my gosh, he was alive this whole time. You find out all that out at the synopsis. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> um, that's like literally the synopsis of the book. One true loves, ha ha. There's two of them, plural. Yeah. So this was a sweet book. I don't typically read romance. I've been reading a lot more of it recently because I'm currently working on a video for the holidays that is about a bunch of like holiday romance books. So I'm really stepping out of my comfort zone, uh, but still it's not something I tend to read. I'm just interested in Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing progression and like how she's changed because she kind of started with romance novels and then got into the books that she's writing now like um the seven husbands of evelyn hugo and malibu rising and uh what's daisy jones and the six so she's definitely like shifted and i I love looking into authors that have, you know, been writing one way and shift into a different writing style or genre or something like that. So um, I'm going back and reading her older stuff to get more of an idea of her as an author. And I'm sure that that will be a video at some point, uh, but I still have quite a few books left. One True Love's pretty fun book, um, nice, sweet, little boring, but in the end, I was a fan. So good. <laughs> I think that's about like the height that a romance book can get from me um, is just like, yay, good, good job. <laughs> I was mostly interested. I was just a little bit bored. <laughs> okay, now let's go through this stack. Uh, first is Brief Interviews with Hideous Men by David Foster Wallace. Uh, this is the author of Infinite Jest, which is widely known for being a very large book. And like, it's, it's good too. Like people like it. <laughs> it's not just that it's a big book, but I think that that's what people think of when they think of the book. Like it's, it's huge. I do plan on reading it one day, but this is my first read for David Foster Wallace. Um, and I really liked it. So this is a collection of short stories and I heard about it because I was going to do a video on books and movies that Bo Burnham has recommended right when his uh, special came out, but then um, other people started doing videos like that and I was like, ugh, I'm kind of late to the game. <laughs> but that was why I had picked up this book to begin with and I'm still really glad I did. And also there is like a lot in this that I think does show itself in Bo Burnham's special, especially around like the meta jokes and observations that he does. There is one short story thing. I don't, I can't even call it a short story. It's like several scenes that are strung together, but they're different in each. It calls them pop quizzes. It's very weird. Um, but there's one in particular that gets like so meta. <laughs> Like it just keeps going like another layer deep, like talking about itself, talking about itself, talking about itself. And there's like these crazy footnotes, but it's uh, really cool to read those. There were some of these that I didn't love, um, but overall, I think that this was a good read. I think that it's gonna remain on my bookshelf for quite a while, which if you don't know, I, I don't tend to keep the books that I've read. The only reason why I have all these actually is um, because I wanted to make this video, but I'll be getting rid of almost all of them. Uh, after I'm done with this. But this one, I think it's going to stick around for a bit because I could definitely see myself rereading it. Now there is an audiobook version of this uh, out there. I can't remember where I listened to parts of it, um, but you have to be really careful because if you want to read the whole thing, that does not exist in the audiobook. The audiobook is an abridged version. It's very cool because it's got different voice actors in it and some of them are like pretty well known. Um, I think uh, Oh, who's, what's the guy that's um, Jim from The Office? John McClane or something? One of those people. I mean, that movie. Oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. John, John something. This is embarrassing. I'm a very large fan. He's very deadly blunt. I don't know who actors are married to. Whatever people are like, you know, the guy who's very deadly blunt. And somebody's also like, this person. I'm like, how, how do you even know all that? And like, this, in this case, I know it's still John, 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 John. Oh, it's gonna annoy me so much. Well, I, I think he is on the audiobook. Wouldn't it be funny if he wasn't? And I just spent all this time trying to remember his name. Um, John Krasinski. I got it. I got it. Oh. What a relief. Anyways, I'm pretty sure John Krasinski's on the um, audiobook, uh, and I, I think it's like some other fairly well-known people as well, um, but it's just like select stories out of this, and it doesn't include like the pop quiz section, which is very large actually. I understand why they didn't, because I think it would have been very difficult to include, um, but 
I, it was my favorite part of the whole thing. So uh, it, that would be a disappointment to me if I just listened to it and didn't realize I was like missing, um, you know, so much and what would end up being my favorite part. Uh, so if you're going to listen to the audiobook, I would just caution you for that. There are some stories in here that are pretty grotesque, um, sometimes in a sexual way. So just fair warning. Okay, then we have another one that'll probably stick on my bookshelf for a while, which is Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. Uh, this is a story about a man who lives in Chinatown and he's an Asian American actor that uh, like works in a restaurant, but also is typically an extra in this TV show called um, Black and White. It's like a procedural um, cop drama. And there's a lot of conversation about like, um, in the very beginning about how like the height that he can hope for as an Asian American actor is to be like Kung Fu guy. There's talks about him playing up like more of an Asian or like Chinese accent to get these roles. There's a lot like of that right away, but then it like shifts and continues into being about even more than that, which already like that was what drew me in. But then I was really surprised by how many conversations are had and how it all seems pretty manageable and makes sense. Like it doesn't feel like Charles Yu is doing too much in this book is what I'm trying to say. Also, it's all written like it's a script. So like we see act two interior uh, golden palace and like it's a script. So it's a quick read, but also there's just so many great conversations that are brought up through it. There's also this like weird line between what's real and what's fake because it's written how it is and because the guy actually works in the restaurant that he's often playing an extra in. Like it's it's very cool. And he talks about like his parents and how they went through the same thing, how they also played roles um, and what kind of roles those were and how they changed as they got older and what kind of roles are open to them now. It's just, it's a fantastic book. I, I'm very excited to read more from Charles Yu. Next up, we have a collection of three books that I read, Golden Hill, Outline, and Never Let Me Go. Um, I talked about these more in depth in a video that I just recently came out with that was basically like reading another book by authors that were nominated for the Booker Long List for 2021, that being Kazuo Ishiguro, uh, Rachel Cusk, and Francis Spufford. Um, this one itself was also a Booker Prize finalist. Because I talked about each of these so much in that video, I would say if you want to know like synopses, things like that, um, then definitely head over there. There's no spoilers for any of the books in that video. Then we have Big Summer by Jennifer Weiner. Uh, this is, was a book club book, although I don't think I ended up going to the book club because I think I read it too slowly. But this is about, gosh, how do you even explain? It's about an Instagrammer or like a influencer, I guess, like an online influencer who is well known for being somebody who's very body positive. Um, but she she got there and like she got known to begin with based off of this viral video that she doesn't really like the way that like it portrays her or um, there's she's kind of got conflicting feelings about it. But basically you kind of see her in her life and um, she reflects back a lot on what led her to the moment in the viral video and then what happened after that. Um, and then she also gets invited to be her friends. Well, not really her friends. It, it's a girl she hasn't talked to in a long time, but she used to be really good friends with, but like they haven't talked in a long time and it's for a pretty good reason. Um, but this girl reaches out to her and asks her to be her maid of honor, I think. At least one of her bridesmaids, but I think it was the maid of honor um, because she like doesn't really have any other friends and she doesn't know if it's because she has a large following and that's something that this person like cares about in her own life um, or if it's for another reason. And then it kind of turns into a bit of a mystery novel. I don't want to say how or why, because I feel like the surprise is probably the most fun part about this book. Um, but yeah, it's pretty weird to read like the first half of this book and then to be like, wait, sorry, what? Where are we going with this? Overall, 
I had pretty meh feelings about this one. Next up, I had another couple of books that I read for a video and that I talk far more about in that video, which is Eight Perfect Murders, The Thursday Murder Club, and there was another one, which was Children of Chicago. But again, if you wanna know my full thoughts on those three mystery novels, I do have a video that is specifically about that. <laughs> and once again, no spoilers in that video. Speaking of spoilers, um, Killian Flynn's Gone Girl. I do have a video on this one, on just this book, my experience reading the book start to finish. It includes full spoilers, everything, yeah, everything, <laughs> uh, because I wanted to talk completely candidly about my experience reading this book. Uh, so I thought it'd be nice to kind of talk about my thoughts here, since if you haven't read it and you're curious to know what I thought, then here's a spoiler free section for you. So this book is about a married couple who they like get together in New York and then they end up moving to Minnesota. I don't think that that's right. They end up moving to some state that's like, you know, not as cool as New York. <laughs> Doesn't have as much happening and it's like a suburb that they move to. And it seems like they both kind of are falling out with each other or like there's some, you know, struggles there, miscommunications there. Uh, and then the wife goes missing, uh, which really happens like right away, but you get like this backstory as well leading up to this moment. And then also um, from the perspective of the husband right when the wife goes missing. This book, I totally understand why people like this book so much. I had a lot of fun reading it. There was lots of twists and turns, things I didn't expect, lots of moments that you know, you look back on later on once you know more information, you're like, oh, that's why this happened. So everything that I could ever want in a thriller, this this book had it. So I had, a, I had a lot of fun reading it. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. If you want, you can do a little read along with my video. One of the commenters on that was saying that um, although she had already read Gone Girl, uh, she would have liked to have done a like read along with the video because I say, you know, this is how many pages I'm at at this point checking in and everything. So you'd be able to like read to that point, watch the video and so on. I think that that's a great idea. And I'm excited to do more videos like that in the future. I've got a few uh, books on the list for that one, including some suggestions from uh, you guys. So thank you so much. But if there's more suggestions that you have, I'd love to hear them. And then as a little teaser for a video that I have coming out very soon, which is anticipated releases of 2021, I've already read two of the three books from that video, which is uh, Riley Sager's Survive the Night and Andy Weir's uh, Project Hail Mary. I won't tell you what I thought about it, but one of them I really liked and the other one, not so much. That's, that's what I'll give you. That's a little spoiler I'll give you. Uh, and then the third book for that is going to be Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. Then we've got Sparks Like Stars by Nadia Hashimi. This was about a girl um, named Sitara. Um, it's hard to remember because she ends up like kind of getting a new name throughout the book and she ends up being called Ariana for most of it. So I couldn't remember what her actual name was. So it's about her growing up in Afghanistan. She lives like a very um, good, she like lives in the capital of Afghanistan uh, and in a very, you know, nice situation, like very wealthy family. But then these uh, communists come and assassinate uh, the president of the country as well as her entire family. And so it's kind of what her life is like uh, moving forward. This was a fantastic book. I really enjoyed reading this one. Um, heartbreaking uh, in a lot of places, but just super well told in a very engaging way that I was always you know, curious to see what was going to happen to her next and where her life was going to take her and how she was going to overcome uh, certain obstacles. Uh, yeah, really great book. And then lastly, I have Timeline by Michael Crichton. You may know from previous videos that I've made, I really like uh, Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park as well as The Lost World. Jurassic Park specifically is like one of my favorite books. Um, so I was excited to get into a book that wasn't like in that universe. That was just a different book by him. And so I picked up Timeline because this was one that Curtis really liked. I did enjoy this one, I, not as much as Jurassic Park, but there were sections of this book I would say that I did like that much. Uh, but I think overall, like there, there were areas where I was a little bit bored, which I had not to that point uh, associated with Michael Crichton because I'd never been bored at all like reading um, the other two books I've read by him. But that being said, I think somebody that is a little bit more into like the fun sciencey explanations in books like this would probably enjoy it more. Uh, 
I think that it just got to be a little bit too much for me and I'm not quite there. Like I love science fiction books and I love getting that background, but sometimes I, I find that books can kind of stay in that area for a long time and it gets to be too much for me probably quicker than it is for other science fiction fans. Um, and for this book, there were a few of those moments for me. I didn't say what this is about. This is basically about uh, time travel and um, basically like fighting for survival in the past, but at the same time, like the people that are in the present are needing to make sure that the people from the past can come back. And there's a lot of uh, excitement and like big, you know, turning points. And uh, it, it is a very fun book, even though I, I lingered on talking about those science explanation moments. There are also tons of moments that are very fast paced and fun um, that, you know, we know Michael Crichton for. And that's it. That is all of the books that I read over like the fall season that weren't uh, one of the 13 long listed uh, books for the Booker Prize. It was nice to do a video like this. It's been a really long time since I've talked about this many books in uh, one video, but it's kind of cool to like try to quickly sum up uh, a book and then also my feelings for it. So please let me know uh, what was your favorite book that you read this fall or in the, like the past couple of months. And I hope that you like this video. And if you did, please do consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Bye.